What's the difference between ChatGPT responses that make you cringe and genius level responses that make you smile? Just a few simple changes and it has nothing to do with better prompts. You know the feeling. You ask ChatGPT for help and you get something back that's like Wikipedia. Boring, generic, and useless. You try again with the longer prompt, same result, more words, same bland energy. Meanwhile, your colleague is getting responses so good, it feels like it came from a $500 an hour consultant. What gives? What if I told you that it's not about your prompting skills at all? Here's the thing most people miss. The secret isn't what you say to ChatGPT, it's about what you tell ChatGPT about yourself before you even begin. Most people skip this step completely. They just jump into asking questions without properly introducing themselves. In the next five minutes, I'll show you exactly how to do this. Here's the 30 second fix that 97% of ChatGPT users don't even know exists. Deep in ChatGPT settings, there's a hidden gold mine of personalization settings that teaches ChatGPT exactly who you are. Here's what you need to do. In ChatGPT, click on your account icon and choose the personalize menu option and navigate to the custom instructions. On the customized ChatGPT window, you can see a number of different fields where you can tell ChatGPT all about yourself, starting with what should ChatGPT call you? Give it your name. After you give it your name, tell ChatGPT what you actually do for work. Don't be vague, be specific. I tell mine that I'm an AI marketer, educator, and content creator. Not just a marketer, not just a content creator. The specificity matters because it gives ChatGPT the context for how you see the world. But here's where it gets really interesting. You can actually customize ChatGPT's personality traits. Want it to be more chatty? There's a button for that. Want it to shoot straight with you? There's a button for that too. We all have preferred ways we like to talk to people. And if we don't set these settings up the way we'd like it, then ChatGPT is just going to sound robotic and boring but we get a lot more out of it when it communicates in a way that we understand. Now here's my favorite pro tip. It sounds counterintuitive, but it works like magic. Hit the skeptical button. If you don't see it, type in adopt a skeptical questioning approach. I know, I know, most people don't want a critic looking over the shoulder, but I promise this makes ChatGPT 10 times more powerful because ChatGPT has a bent towards being pleasing. It wants to help you, it wants to serve you, but it's often too eager to please. A high paid consultant actually presses in a little bit, asks good questions, sometimes tells you no. That's what we all need in our lives. Not a lot, but enough that it actually makes us better. It feels different, right? That's the power of giving ChatGPT an identity rather than just throwing tasks at it. Now, what I just showed you works great for simple tasks. But if you think about the bigger picture, like saving 10 hours a week by automating all your marketing tasks, that's where things get really interesting. That's exactly the kind of challenge that AI Business Society members are solving. They're not just getting better with ChatGPT, they're completely transforming how they approach content creation, client work, and business strategy through AI. You get access to monthly live trainings, monthly meetups, and some of the top experts on AI in the field. This isn't just theory, this is about practical techniques you can use in your business this week. There's nothing to lose, there's a 30 day money back guarantee, so check out the link in the description. So this next technique builds directly on what we were just talking about. Every time ChatGPT annoys you, it's an opportunity to make it 10 times better. Here's where things get really powerful. There's a whole section in ChatGPT called, is there anything else ChatGPT should know about you that most people completely ignore? This is where you can mention your interests, your values, and your preferences when it comes to ChatGPT. Here's why it's absolute magic. Every time ChatGPT annoys me, I just give it another bullet point of what to remember instead. Here's an example. ChatGPT has a habit of using the word delve often. So I said, always use the word dive in place of delve. It also has a habit of putting emojis before a title, like on a blog post or an article. So I told it, never use emojis before titles. It's really that simple. It even knows how I liked my blog posts written because I got to the point where I was having to re-explain the style, the tone, how I wanted to be skimmable, and all the other little nuances I like about blog posts, I now load into that section of the settings so that I never have to explain it again. This isn't just about preferences, it's about efficiency. You're essentially training your AI assistant to work the exact way you want it to across your entire account. 
This next method might surprise you. It's one of the ones that make people the most nervous, but it's actually one of the most powerful features we have in ChatGPT. It's keeping your chat history turned on. Navigate to your settings window, find the personalization tab, look for reference chat history, make sure it's toggled on. Yes, ChatGPT already knows what you've talked about before, but when you have it toggled on, that information is actually going to work for you. Instead of just sitting there unused, ChatGPT can actually put all that information to work for you by taking all your preferences, things you've communicated about, projects that you're working on, and remember it in future conversations. Think about it like this. Would you rather work with a consultant that knows the ins and outs of your business or with a consultant that treats every conversation like you're meeting for the first time? The choice is obvious and the magic happens on autopilot. Now this part's a little confusing. ChatGPT actually has a whole section dedicated to memory that's different from remembering all the previous conversations it's had with you. And you can use this to your advantage. You might've noticed that ChatGPT tries to remember things when you give it I statements. I prefer this, I'm trying to work on that. And it stores it in the little memory box in your ChatGPT account. But I wanna show you how you can use that memory feature like a pro. You can actually proactively load ChatGPT's memory with the stuff that matters the most. I'm gonna give you a prompt that is golden because it's going to kickstart a process that will have ChatGPT pull all the most valuable parts of you into its memory to be used for later conversations. What would be the most helpful things for you to remember about me? Not just short-term project stuff, but the big picture things that would help you serve me better across everything I do. It'll ask you questions about your strategic role and decision-making style, your core business goals or personal goals, your brand or personal values, your work style, and list of non-negotiables. Now, there's a limit to how many memories you can load into ChatGPT, so I often go back into the settings and manage the memory, because sometimes it has something golden that it needs to know about you, but sometimes it accidentally grabs something that it doesn't need to know. Like that one embarrassing thing you were asking for advice for last week, it doesn't need to remember that. Here's a bonus tip. If you're ever showing off ChatGPT to friends or having a conversation that you don't want it to remember, use the temporary chat feature. There's a little dotted line icon in the upper right hand corner of the chat screen that you can activate in order to have a conversation with ChatGPT that you don't want it to remember. In this next tip, you'll need a paid version of ChatGPT in order to create custom instructions that can be applied to more than just your account, but be separated out for individual clients, even areas of your life. And it's called ChatGPT Projects. On the left side of ChatGPT, there is an icon called New Project. If you click it, you can give it a name, like I'll give this one Social Media Marketing World. Click Create Project. And then you can add custom instructions so that ChatGPT can understand what you're trying to accomplish in this project. You can use ChatGPT projects to organize all kinds of things, whether they're separate clients that need separate writing styles or different areas of your life where you have different goals that ChatGPT needs to understand the context to. When you have it separated into different projects, you can actually customize the way ChatGPT responds Bonds in different areas or different clients or different projects that you're working on. It's like having multiple specialized assistants helping you accomplish your work. Once you have ChatGPT set up to know you, the real magic happens when you start feeding it actual data. In this next video, I'll show you exactly how to upload your data to ChatGPT to get insights that would otherwise take you forever to figure out. Click or tap this video to watch it now.